go. We'll start recording. So uh, just in case anybody here would like a copy of this webinar, um, the recording will be sent to you guys after as well. Okay. So welcome again to the RICO DTG webinar series. Uh, again, my name is Hazel Mitchell. You guys have probably joined here in the past. If you have, welcome. Thanks again for joining us. Um, if you haven't, and this is your first time joining us, I am the national sales manager here at RICO DTG. So I will be taking you through our, um, our webinar. All right, I'm just gonna close these so you guys don't see those gray boxes anymore, those annoying gray boxes, I should say. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's get started. Thanks so much for being patient. Uh, so today what we're gonna be discussing is um, basically a little bit about DTG and we have a little, uh, a little special announcement towards the end. So first we'll go with introductions. Again, my name is Hazel Mitchell. I'm the national uh, sales manager here at Rico DTG. Then we'll talk a little bit about what DTG is, and then we'll jump right into uh, the Rico family of printers. Some of you probably have seen some of those printers already. Uh, we'll just do a brief overview on the printers today. Then we'll talk about DTG and pre-treating. Uh, we're going to jump a little bit into more detail as to why pre-treating is important. Um, and then we'll go into, can DTG print on 100% polyester? That has been the big question for many, many years now. And then after that, we'll go ahead and do our special announcement, talk about the new product. And then uh, the favorite, my favorite time is the iPad giveaways. Um, and then we'll go into the breakout rooms. So just a couple of housekeeping rules, guys. Um, you guys are muted. Um, so uh, just so that the presentation goes smoothly. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, we will take questions um, in the breakout sessions. So I do please, please, please encourage you to go ahead and jot down your questions somewhere on your phone, on a piece of paper, and um, type them in towards the end. Um, just in case you type them in in the chat uh, box now, it's going to be hard for us to um, basically scroll all the way up and see the um, the uh, um, the questions. Um, and I am seeing some people here saying that it is. Pixelated. That is weird. Okay, so let me stop sharing. Thank you guys for the heads up. Screen is very, very blurry. Okay, that is not good. Let me stop sharing. And I will start sharing again. Is that any better? It is a um, screen is clear now. Thanks, Raul. Appreciate it. Looks good. All right. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna close this box. If something like that happens again, just everyone start typing on the chat. And if I see a bunch of chat craziness, I'm gonna open the chat and read it, okay? Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and close this out now so you guys can see the screen again. All right, so again, hold your questions till the very end uh, in your breakout rooms, okay? And then we will talk about your questions then. All right, so. What is DTG printing? Um, I'm sure everyone in here already knows what DTG uh, printing is. Basically, DTG stands for direct to garment printing. Um, and it's basically a inkjet style. So essentially, you guys are probably familiar with the, the past way of printing, which is uh, screen printers, um, heat press papers, where you're printing on a piece of paper, oops, where you're printing on a piece of paper, and then you're taking that and transferring that onto a shirt. Um, or you're probably even familiar with um, vinyl. So where you have a, a piece of vinyl, you print on it, and then you got to cut around the edges and do all that stuff. With direct to garment, it is exactly what is it's describing, direct to garment. So you basically take the shirt, you're putting it right on top of the, the platen or the table on the printer, um, and it uses the technology, which is basically inkjet printer technology, where it prints water-based ink directly onto uh, your garment. So it's extremely soft, it's durable, it's vibrant, and you can basically use it for one-offs um, because there's no setup when it comes to direct-to-garment printing. 
Um, so direct agreement is, as I mentioned, it's easy as one, two, three. I always tell people that if you know how to work a regular paper printer, it's very similar. Now, obviously there are the differences, so it's not exactly like working a regular paper printer, but there are, um, it's very similar to the same way where if you're printing on a regular piece of paper, you know how to print on a shirt because the only difference is you're really loading a shirt. Okay. Um, so really it's easy as one, two, and three, exactly what the screen says, where you design it, you take a high resolution image, you simply drag and drop it onto our RIP software. So we have RIP and a RIP or ColorGate software now. Uh, once you go ahead and do that, then you click print. When you click print, the software will load the printer. Uh, I'm sorry, load the image onto the printer. So once you click print, you load the shirt, you hit print and then it's ready to rock and roll. And then you have a shirt that's uh, ready to be printed and, and cured in less than three minutes or so, okay? Um, and that's really all it is. After you print, you take that shirt and you bring it all over to the heat press and you cure it and you're finished. So I actually have a video here that I want to share with you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and press play on this video. It's a short video uh, so you guys can actually see how um, director garment is done in the easiest way. All right, here we go. Okay, so as you guys, oh, <laughs> a little ending there. So as you guys uh, was able to see there, um, the images, or sorry, it's, it's, it's literally that easy to print on direct -to garment um, I'm just gonna check the chat box here just to make sure. Um, there was sound on the video, but it was really just um, a few, um, 
it was just music. So you didn't really miss anything if you didn't hear the sound. Uh, does the video show the largest plate? No, that's the medium sized plate on the video. And it's very pixelated again. Okay, let me, <laughs> we're having some issues with internet today, I'm not sure. Let me just stop screen share and I'm gonna share my screen again, okay? Not sure what's going on with internet. I did definitely make sure that my internet speed is, uh, is really good before this. So let's see, is this better? Okay, cool. Thanks again, guys, for the heads up. All right, so one big thing that I wanna emphasize in this particular, um, you know, um, designing or whenever you're printing with director garment, and really it's for any type of printing, but more so with director garment is the design. And the reason why I have take a high resolution image it, on this presentation is that you absolutely have to use the high resolution image. So if you're trying to, I mean, I always use this saying where it, it's literally, you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? So if you're trying to take a small resolution image um, or a, a really bad resolution image and you're trying to print that onto a shirt, or maybe you're trying to take a, a an image that's maybe a two by two image and you're trying to blow that up to, say, uh, you know, a 10 by 10. Imagine that you take a two by two and you try to blow it up to a 10 by 10 image. It's not going to look very well. It's going to look very, very pixelated, like how my presentation looked earlier. <laughs> so you have to be very careful with what you're printing and how your images are when it comes to, um, you know, setting and sending that image into your director garment. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. So that's really how easy it is to print with director garment. It's simple as one, two, and three. Okay. So I'm just going to move on to the next um, page here. So DTG benefits. Um, I'm sure again, if you guys have done some research, director garment, a lot of people are flocking to the to director garment printing, number one for its ease, but more importantly, there are some other benefits to it. So for example, you'll, you'll be able to produce small and large orders without any additional cost. So, you know, one advantage that you would have up against screen printers is that screen printers, basically, they do have a setup cost and they have minimums. <clears throat> With this, you don't, because it's so easy, as you can see, you simply drag and drop the image that your customer may have provided to you, or maybe your image that you designed, it's really easy to take those small orders or even those large, large orders without having to charge them a minimum fee or even a setup fee. So you can literally produce one shirt with no issues. Um, and then again, you can customize and personalize each individual shirts. Some of uh, a customers that I've known um, for a few months now, you know, they take advantage of these different holidays that are coming up. For example, Valentine's Day. Um, I saw a really cute design that someone made um, where I stole, you know, some one of the back of the hoodie said I stole um, her heart. And then on the, the female shirt says, so I stole his last name, which is super cute, right? So those kind of custom a lot, customize, personalize individual shirt, um, birthdays is really huge now where, you know, they print on the mask where, you know, they have my eighth, you know, birthday quarantine style, those kind of things where you can really personalize it for your, for your customers. And it doesn't take very much time to do so. So you can take that, those, um, those small orders. Um, and then of course, one of the other DTG benefits is you have quicker turnaround times. Um, so again, depending on which printer you go with, and we'll cover the different type of uh, Rico printers that we have, depending on which printer you go with, you do have those diff different um, print times. And so you'll be able to, you know, produce the shirts for your customers a lot quicker. You also have, uh, you are also able to create a sample to you. Somebody muted me. Okay. I will unmute myself. <laughs> there we go. So um, Sorry, what... that was me. I got button happy. <laughs> there you go. That's Marika. That's our product relations manager, everybody. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but just what I was talking about with the uh, create sample uh, sales tool is because you can print one shirt one-offs, you can then use this particular garment that you're printing as a sample. So whether you're wearing it 
or you're dropping it off to a, you know, a nearby business, um, it's super easy to print one, one offs. Um, so that's a, a really good sales tool. Um, and then of course you have unlimited colors. So that's another benefit. So, um, if you guys are familiar, or if you guys have ever requested for personalized shirts before they will charge you, whether you're printing one color, two color, three color, four colors, majority of the time, four colors is their maximum. So, um, and the reason why is because if they're a screen printer, they have to get those, you know, colors on every single one of those, um, on those little, uh, um, oh, I'm forgetting the word, but what they call it, but they have to pre prepare every single one of those colors. So essentially, you know, there's a color limitation depending on um, what type of printing. Now with direct to garment, you do have unlimited colors that you can work with. Okay. Um, you can print on substrates outside of garments as well. So essentially, you know, our our uh, director garment printers can print on, you know, obviously the regular apparel. So hoodies, you know, um, jeans, hats, shoes, socks, um, sweaters, long sleeve t-shirts, but then we can also go outside of the box and print on wood. Um, you know, you can print on metal. Now, whenever you're printing outside of apparel, there are and is a different process. So don't um, just jump into right away printing on wood. I would definitely recommend that you reach out uh, to our technical department or even our RICO University so that you'll be able to see exactly how you can print on these other types of um, substrates, okay? All right. Um, and then of course you can expand your customer capability. So you do have, um, because you have those different um, items that you can print on, the more um, trained you get with your printer, the more items you can add onto your uh, retail shop. And of course, the biggest thing is that DTG has an aggressive return on investment. Basically you, and we'll talk about ROI later, but your um, profit margins are anywhere between 80 to 90% profit. So that's one of the biggest reasons why people get into t-shirt or apparel printing. Um, as a matter of fact, this industry, this apparel industry is a trillion dollar industry. So it's not going anywhere. Um, and it needs more people just like you guys to, to jump in and help the customer base. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. Please. Okay. So profit margins, this is, this is, you know, okay. That would be nice. Okay. This is really important to talk about. Um, one thing that I want to keep, um, note of when we're talking about the profit margin is to keep in mind, these are retail profit margins, okay? So when you're looking at retail profit margins, you want to make sure that, um, or you want to remember that these numbers that I'm showing you are averages, okay? So for example, a blank shirt wholesale can be anywhere between, you know, literally a dollar 75 to 250. Um, you can even go up to $4, okay? Um, so we're going to round it off or kind of average your, your wholesale shirts to $2 and 50 cents ink used again, it's dependent on the image that you're using. So the image, um, you know, if it's a small two by two logo, you're literally looking at pennies for that ink. I mean, 10, 15 cents, right? But if you're looking at an eight by 10, you're getting more closer to the dollar. But again, if you're printing a 20 by 16, uh, which is the biggest print size we can do on our printers. Uh, again, 20 by 16 edge to edge image. Um, that's going to be closer more to $3 to $4. So these are more averages um, that I'm talking about here. And also you're probably not going to be printing a 20 by 16 image every single time, right? So essentially your blank hole, uh, blank shirt is $2 and 50 cents. Your ink used on printing is a dollar. So your total cost is $3 and 50 cents. Your selling price, if you do sell it at $25 is $21 and 50 cents. So basically your profit is $21 and 50 cents. If you sell it at $25. So if you sell 500 shirts, you're making $10, I'm sorry, $10,750. If you're selling 1000 shirts, you're making $21 thousand five hundred dollars. I always mention this in every single one, one of my webinars. So if this is not the first webinar you've joined, I highly, highly, highly encourage everyone to make it a goal to print, meaning take as take in orders, not just print the shirts, obviously, but make sure you have about 40 
to 60 shirt orders a day. Now, again, you're not going to get there from day one. Um, I mean, I, I've talked to a lot of customers that have been able to build their business and get 60 shirt orders or 50 shirt orders a day. Some people took them three months. Some people took them six months. Some people took them a year. But regardless, make that your goal. Um, and when I say make that your goal, obviously, you got to go out there and hunt for these customers. You got to, you know, the customers are obviously not going to know you're there um, or know you even exist with this printer. So go out and talk about this printer. Go out and pass your business card out, your samples out. Um, make that your goal that you get 40 to 50 shirts a day. If you think about that, if you do at least a minimum of 40 shirts a day, you're making in profit a minimum of $10,000 a month. Um, that's a good chunk of change. So <laughs> make that your goal. Again, also another note that I always like to tell people about profit margins is know your prices up front. So as you can see here, this is an average. So the blank shirts that I gave you, that's $2 and 50 cents. Sometimes it'll be less, sometimes it'll, it'll be more, but know your prices up front. Um, for example, if somebody orders a triple XL shirt, that shirt is, or a sweater even, that is not going to be $2.50. Your cost for a 2XL or 3XL or even a 4XL shirt is going to go up. So those shirts are literally sometimes about four or five, six dollars. Now, if you've quoted somebody that you're going to charge them $10 for that triple XL shirt, your profit margin just went down, right? So you should know exactly what those shirt prices are going to, uh, are, are going to cost prior to you giving the, your customer or whoever's inquiring a price or a quote. So just make sure that you keep that in mind. Okay, guys, that the cost will differ based on the type of brand, um, as well as the size that you're printing on. Um, one last note about printing sizes. Most people think bigger is better. If you live in Texas, then that, that's what you live by. Um, but when it comes to printing on a shirt, you want to make sure that that's proportionate to the shirt that you're printing on. Um, medium, large shirts, you know, you don't have to print a 16 by 20 because it's going gonna, it's gonna to look weird on a really big shirt. Uh, on a really small shirt, you're having a really big image. So just make sure that your images are proportionate to the shirt sizes. Um, obviously, if you're doing that, then you're also saving money on ink. Okay. And then the biggest gain that we're talking about is obviously making sure that you guys have your profit margin um, set up. Uh, and of course, that'll help you make some money, right? All right. So that's the profit when it comes to DTG printing. Now, which printer is right for me? Um, we have our three printers here for Rico DTG. Uh, the one on your far left is the Rico RI100. This one, uh, if you sell about 300 shirts, you basically pay for your printer. Um, this one is basically good for white or light colored shirts only. It is 15, it does about 15 shirts an hour. Okay, just sorry, just checking the chat, making sure no one's uh, uh, talking to me here. Okay, cool. Um, so it'll do about 15 shirts an hour and it's virtually no maintenance for the Rico RI. 100. Now keep in mind for the Rico RI 100, this will only print on white or light colored shirts only. It is super fun though. If you uh, obviously not now, but once uh, we're able to travel again and do road shows and tro trade shows, this is a really fun printer. I've known a lot of people who use this printer to print in fairs um, and events. Um, they even brought it to a birthday party um, because you can take pictures right there on the spot, send it right to the printer and print it on a shirt. Super fun idea. Um, it's kind of like having a photo booth at a birthday party, but instead now you have a really cool printer at a birthday party that will print on apparel. So that was a really, really amazing idea that one of my customers had uh, when they purchased the RI100. Um, then of course we have your middle printer here, which is the Rico RI 1000. This is by far our most popular printer just because it prints on any color apparel. Uh, if you sell about, sell about 650 shirts there, uh, that basically makes up for your ROI. So if you sell 650 shirts, you paid for your printer. Okay. Um, and again, it prints on any color apparel. So from white to dark colored shirts, um, and of course any color in between, It'll do about 40 to 60 shirts an hour, depending again, if it's all uh, dark colors, if it's uh, all light colors, that will vary per hour. Um, and of course, depending on size. So if you're printing on logos, maybe a two by two size logo, you'll get 
you'll get tons of shirts per hour, right? Um, just because it's a two by two. So this, uh, on average, um, we tested it on an eight by 10 size, okay? Um, and then of course you have multiple applications with the Rico RA1000 as well. And it has easy maintenance. Um, it, your maintenance, what you're doing with this particular printer is basically once a week and then once a month for the Rico RI-1000. And then you have our newest printer, which is Rico RI-2000. Now this one, you'll basically make your ROI, your return on investment in about 950 shirts. So again, it might take you a month to sell 950 shirts. I've seen it done before, um, or it might take you a year to sell 950 shirts. But once you sell 950 shirts you've made and you've paid for your Rico RI-2000 printer. Now, what's the biggest difference between this and the Rico RA1000 is um, it will print, of course, on any color apparel as well. It will all, uh, it's a much faster printer. So as you can see there, it'll do about 60 to 100 shirts per hour. Um, when it's printing on a white colored shirt, it'll literally print an eight by 10 image in less than 15 seconds. Super, super fast. Um, dark color shirts is less than a minute when it comes to printing with the Rico RA2000. Uh, again, multiple applications, so shoes, socks, hats, um, you know, metal, wood, glass, those kind of things. And then, of course, you have easier maintenance. Um, I know the RI-1000 says easy maintenance, so I had to put RI-2000 easier maintenance. <laughs> so with the RI-2000, uh, the easier maintenance is, is actually automatic. So it will go ahead, even though it, it is still a weekly and a monthly maintenance, the weekly maintenance is basically an auto maintenance. So you literally just push a couple buttons on the screen, and then it cleans itself. Okay, with the Waco RA1000, you do have to set aside about 10 minutes of your time to do that weekly maintenance. Okay, so not too hard for both of them. Okay, uh, any questions for these, for these machines, please jot them down and ask them during your your uh, breakout sessions with your regional managers. Okay, so keep those questions um, in a notebook or, or uh, your phone there, and we will make sure to answer those questions during the breakout sessions for the printers. All right, so let's go ahead and move on here. So I have a little grocery list for those who are looking to purchase or get your DTG business started. So essentially, first question is, everyone always asks me, should I purchase, um, purchase a third party machine? My answer to that, and I'm pretty partial, obviously, because I work for DTG, but at the same time, I've heard way too many um, horror stories. Oh, it's pixelated again. Okay, let me go back and stop sharing. Maybe if I share it again, it will go back. Okay, I'm hoping this is better. All right, so um, make sure that you purchase a machine that has, thank you, Monica, that has a warranty. Okay, majority of the time when you purchase a used or third party machine, uh, even if it's a refurbished one, there's no warranty. Okay, the reason why is when you're purchasing a, a director garment printer, if someone's maybe they've closed your shop or whatnot, um, and you're purchasing on eBay, there's no way for you to actually see that. And I've heard too many horror stories where people have purchased the machine and it's taken you know, um, say, you know, three days and they realize that the machine was not good and they can't return it anymore. Um, and then they have to pay a lot of money on warranty costs. So just make sure that any machine that you're purchasing, that it does have a factory warranty. Okay. Uh, so your other grocery list is you have to have a heat press. I recommend a heat press with an auto lift or, or auto, uh, pop up, call it that. Basically what that means is if you set the heat press for 60 seconds in 60 seconds, it automatically pops up. Um, if you don't have one of those heat presses, it, it will just beep and you have to be reminded or run to the heat press to lift it up every 60 seconds, which for me is a little bit of a pain. Um, but of course that is your preference. <laughs> um, but I always recommend auto pop up because obviously you want to avoid any burning. Um, and when it comes to your garment or even your office. So just keep that in mind. A couple other really cool things that you can uh, have on your grocery list is a tunnel dryer. That's not necessary, um, but you could have one of those. I, I know a lot of our customers advance to a tunnel dryer later on. Uh, a power sprayer, 
uh, or a pretreatment machine, which we will be talking about later, uh, as well as a cool mist uh, humidifier, non-misting, sorry, humidifier. And then of course, I always recommend having an extra set of inks. Um, extra set of inks basically is obviously you don't want to have a large order come in on a Saturday and you only have 10% on your ink, 10% uh, inks in your printer. That's, um, and you have to deliver this order by Monday. So, you know, definitely always have an extra set of inks in your home so that you can make sure that you are always uh, prepared for any large orders. Okay. And of course, sturdy tables uh, for the printer and press that goes without saying, I guess. All right, so now let's jump into pre-treat. I did see on the chat there, when are we gonna get into the pre-treating? Um, we are gonna get into that, we're into it right now. So really quickly, why do you need to pre-treat? Essentially, um, the reason why you need to pre-treat, and I always like to you know, kind of use an example that we all are pretty familiar with is, you know, if you were gonna paint your walls, um, most of the time you want to prime your walls. So majority, if you hire, whether you're doing it yourself, or you're hiring someone to paint your walls in your home, you want to make sure that you put a primer. So pre-treating basically acts as a primer. So as you can see here in the photo, uh, majority of, um, not majority, but all, I should say, garments have little holes in them because they are stitched together. Uh, they're woven together. So essentially what the pre-treat does is that it fills in the shirt so that when you layer your white ink or layer your CMI YK, it gives that, it goes in and it just basically prints right on top of that pre-treat. Um, again, we'll have some uh, questions answered by the pre-treat, but this is basically the main reason why you want to pre-treat your shirts. It takes less than a few seconds, less than 30 seconds to pre-treat your shirt, um, but it will produce high quality garments uh, high quality images, sorry, high quality prints, vibrant images. And at the same time, it will help your garments last longer because you've primed your garments. Okay. So it's literally a quick process. So with that being said, can DTG print on 100% polyester? The answer for a very long time, for a very long time was no. Okay. <laughs> it cannot print on 100% polyester unless it's a uh, light colored shirt. So obviously if you're printing on a white polyester garment, you can do that. Now the answer to this is yes. So can DTG print on hundred percent polyester? Yes. Whether it's light colored garments or it is dark colored garments. So for example, a black or red shirt, that's hundred percent polyester. Now, how, how, how can we be so confident? Well, number one, the partner that we've just joined, uh, or that has, uh, that we've joined forces and I know it is great information, Renee. Um, we, we've joined forces, which is basically image armor. They basically have done test over test, over test, over test, over test with our uh, printer and basically uh, and their image armor um, solution. And they have now discovered that with their solution, with their pre-treat, you and our printer, you can print on 100% polyester. And how do we do so? We're going to go ahead and play a video here. Um, let me just go here and we'll play this video and then we'll take some questions. I believe Brian is in the room with us. So I'm going to play the video first and then we'll take some questions right after. Okay, guys. So let me click play. Actually, let me do this. I just want to make sure that it's fresh. I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to share again just to make sure. Okay. And I'm going to click play. Printing on 100% polyester fabrics has always been an elusive goal in direct garment printing. The question is, can we do it successfully? The answer is yes. But there are expectations to manage and some things to keep in mind to successfully be able to do 100% polyester printing with your direct -to garment printer. So let's take a look at how we can successfully print using our direct -to garment printer, the Image Armor line of pretreatments, and the Viper pretreatment machines to do 100% polyester printing with DTG. To illustrate the impressive results we can get on white polyester fabrics, we're going to utilize the Image Armor Light Shirt Formula pretreatment 
and apply it to the fabric like you would a normal t-shirt and then heat set it. In our example, we're going to use a cover sheet so that we can spray just half of the shirt with pretreatment and the other half will remain untreated so we can see the difference in the final print. What we'll do is we'll lay our Sportec white polyester shirt out flat on our foam platen and take a piece of craft paper to lay down and create a barrier so that we're only going to spray the right side of the shirt and not the left side. Then we'll take the Viper Mini and just spray the shirt accordingly. Carefully remove the paper so that we don't get any pretreatment on the side of the shirt that is untreated, and we'll go to the heat press. Taking a closer look at the results from our experiment with this side being untreated and this side pretreated with the Image Armor Light, we can see for sure that the black is definitely not nearly as defined or black. This is a true rich black in comparison to the untreated side. Down the middle, we also see here that the blue is very much a more true accurate blue we're over here on the untreated side, it is just not as crisp or sharp. We can also see for sure a difference between the reds where it's a true deep red with sharp, crisp lines. And this over here where it's a little more muddy and not nearly as detailed. Now that we've had a look at how the Image Armor Light Shirt Formula can help your white What happened? Polyester printing? Let's take a look at the elusive black polyester shirt. Printing on black polyester fabric can be tricky, but it's not impossible. First, you'll need to find a good shirt. In our case, we're utilizing the Sportec ST340. It gives a great smooth finish and will hold the ink very well, which is what we're looking to do when we're DTG printing. For the pre-treating process, we really aren't going to change much in comparison to printing on 100% cotton shirts. What we are going to do though is bump up the pre-treatment amount slightly and probably apply between 25 and 30 grams of pre-treatment for a 14 by 14 inch square area. We just want to make sure that we don't use too much pressure during the heat press process. This will cause excessive marks that will be visible on the shirt and won't wash out, as well as physically change the appearance of the surface of the shirt. We want to minimize that as much as possible, which is why we'll use as little pressure as needed, but enough to be able to cure the pretreatment and dry it correctly.
As far as printing is concerned, we really aren't going to do much of anything different. However, in the rip, we will want to up the white underbase as much as possible without overdoing it, and this will depend on how much ink that your rip will allow your printer to put down. We will also up the white highlights as necessary and maybe increase the vibrancy of the colors a little bit. We will need to compensate because polyester does tend to dull the colors down, especially when it is heat cured on a heat press or in a conveyor dryer. Now note, a conveyor dryer will cure the ink and it will also not allow the pressure of the heat press to mute out the colors. However, most people will be utilizing a heat press, so we will wanna make sure that we don't have too much pressure again to keep the colors more vibrant and also reduce the possibility of the heat press marks from the heat press during the curing of the ink. One thing to keep in mind is that when you are printing on polyester fabrics, you will experience dye migration. Dye migration happens when the shirt is heated up to a certain temperature. Typically, this is somewhere around 285 to 300 degrees. The dyes in the shirt will gas off and sublimate up through the white ink film on your print. Say on a red shirt, this will turn your white ink Pink. This is why it's extremely difficult to get great looking white prints on colored polyester fabrics. Black just happens to be an easier shirt to print with your direct garment on 100% polyester. You can experiment and play with different styles and brands of shirts as well as colors to try to find that which will work in your shop. In our example here, this is why we chose the Sportech ST340 style, because on the black shirt, we can still get incredible looking prints that stay white and will wash extremely well. So as you can see, we were, we are able to, let me just stop sharing here and share this again. So I know it gets pixelated. As you guys can see, we were able to go ahead and print on hundred percent polyester, a couple of tips and tricks there with Brian, um, in regards to, um, uh, printing on polyester making sure that you use uh, low pressure, I was gonna say high pressure, low pressure uh, when it comes to uh, pressing and printing on your shirt. So I do have Ryan here um, in this meeting. So what I'm gonna do is I will actually give away the iPads first, okay? Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and take questions for Brian. Um, and then we'll go into the breakout rooms. Okay. So again, I'll give it away. I'll give away a couple iPads now, then we'll take some questions for Brian. Cause I know that's what everyone's waiting for. And then, um, and then we'll go right into 
the breakout sessions for the regional managers. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna open the participants here and we're gonna pick our first winner. And then, so, oops, that's not what I was trying to, here we go. Okay, first winner, I normally close my eyes and just scroll, 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 scroll. Okay, first winner is, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, uh, John Bobbin. Is there a John here? It would probably help if I turn on my chat to see. Uh, John Bobbin. Thanks so much, Renee. Thanks so much, David, uh, for the presentation. Oh, there's John. There you are. Congratulations. Congratulations, John. You won our first iPad. Yay. All right. One more iPad going to give away. I'm going to turn again, go back to the front top of the, uh, and I'm just going to turn away. And I have Samantha um, Allion. Samantha Allion. If you are here, please type in the team chat. Um, I do need you to type in here just to make sure before I, I choose another winner. Oh, here she is. She won. Shanna says, yay, Samantha. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations to Samantha. Congratulations to John. I now want to go ahead and open it up to, for questions. I'm going to stop sharing here. I'm going to open it up uh, for questions for Brian. Welcome, Brian. This is our pre-treat master um, <laughs> king. Call him what you want. <laughs> Brian, thanks so much for joining us here today. I'm sure that we'll have some questions here for you. So go ahead, guys. Actually, while, while we're waiting for questions, uh, Brian, if you want to just do a short intro on yourself. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay. Great. I'm, I'm stuck at home, <laughs> uh, quarantining. I don't, don't have it, but uh, my oldest kid had gotten it while I was at college, so we're just playing it safe. So henceforth, I'm stuck in the basement and can't do any live demos or anything today. That's right. So that's, I can tell you this, I'm missing the office. <laughs> Fair enough. Big, big time. But um, now we've been in the industry for a long time in the apparel decorating industry. Um, unfortunately, too long. I, we're pushing 36 years now. Wow. Yeah, I'm, an, I'm an old guy now. But say, um, that's how old I am. No, oh, I was <laughs> doing this when you were in diapers, girl. <laughs> no, but it, it's all good. We've uh, seen a lot of neat things in the apparel decorating industry and the uh, direct garment is is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to see a lot of really neat stuff, I think, even over the next couple of years gotcha. where it's going to make it a lot easier for people. Um, that's why we're excited to work with uh, Rico with yeah. the pre-treat machines and, and even these webinars to help make... Um, educate basically yeah. make it easier for people because if you can get a good foundation mm -hmm. then everything is is that much easier you can focus on selling and doing what you need to do in printing and making money yeah, yeah absolutely and um the special announcement that i really wanted to jump into is that we uh, have joined forces with Brian Walker here and his Viper pretreatment machines. Um, and we really wanted to give everybody what we, what we called um, our, our business in a box, right? And in just a, a little bit, I'll play a, a video for you guys since we don't have too many questions um, coming in here. Um, I'll go ahead and play a video for you guys of his pretreatment machines. Um, but we joined forces because we know and we understand that pre-treating is so very, very important when it comes to the director garment uh, printer. So we want to make sure that we give you guys the quote unquote, no guesswork in pre-treating. Um, we have joined forces with them because they just recently announced their Viper Mini, which you saw in the, uh, in the uh, presentation there. So that is uh, the probably the biggest announcement. And then of course we have this 
again, business in a box. And I'll talk a little bit about it. And uh, when you guys go into your uh, breakout sessions with your regional managers, you can talk to them as well. But um, basically what this business in a box entails is that uh, anybody who purchases a pre-treatment machine, you're going to get free shipping. You're going to get $125 for, from Rico uh, to purchase, uh, whether you want inks or more or pre-treatment liquid. Um, but with the pre-treatment machine, you're also going to get a bottle of Image Armor Light pre-treat, Image Armor Ultra pre-treat, along with a box of uh, t-shirts from Rico DTG. So uh, when I say box of t-shirts, you're looking at 72 blank shirts that you're going to be getting with this business in a box. So that again, that you basically have everything you need right there. And then to start printing the day you get your printer and your pre-treatment machine. So, um, so yeah, Brian, I, I, I know you're stuck at home. Is, should I, should I play the demo video or, or do you have a little demo um, I, there? No, no, I don't okay, have anything okay. here. I, no. I, if I, I, to be honest with you, I really do miss the office, <laughs> which sounds weird, but uh, when you're stuck at home. I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> Fair enough. That's okay. Let me play the video. Cause I, I want to make sure everyone sees this, um, this, uh, this video here, I'm just gonna pull it up here. Uh, while I'm pulling it up, um, Brian, if you can answer this question, how sure. much treatment liquid, how much for treatment treatment liquid? And oh, no. well, we'll talk about pricing later. Let's answer this question first. <laughs> With our pre-treated shirts better at price than treating it yourself? There, that's a, that's a good question for you. That all depends. Um, you can print on, virtually any shirt, but that doesn't mean you should print on those shirts. Um, typically a heavier weight shirt, the, the way I try to explain it is this. If you have <clears throat> a lighter colored shirt, you can typically use less pre-treatment if you're printing white ink, uh, just because you don't need as much hiding power. So darker shirts will require more than lighter colored shirts. Heavier weight shirts typically, like you showed in your pre-treat uh, graphic, uh, will typically require more pre-treatment than will a lighter, lighter weight shirt. So you take all those into consideration um, and then you take into the account the quality of the shirt. A lot of times the RTP shirts will end up being pretty much the same or it can be less than an equivalent type shirt. Now, if you're trying to, if you're going to pre-treat a dollar fifty black shirt, it, you can, you may as well just pre-treat that yourself. But again, the quality of that shirt is not going to be anywhere near what you would be getting for an equivalent shirt that, like the RTP would be like. Plus, if you take into account you have multiple print locations, then that's really, really where you get into the savings because if you're doing a front and a back of the shirt or you know, a sleeve or something like that, uh, just the sheer time. And that's what a lot of people don't take into account is the time it takes to pre-treat, let alone the extra cost. Now I do tell everybody at this point in the game, you're still going to have to pre-treat shirts because somebody's gonna wanna, uh, you know, three quarter length sleeve, baby ribbed back crop top with uh, halter straps or something crazy that you're gonna, going to have to pre-treat. But the vast majority of shirts that you do are your run-of-the-mill variety, you know, t-shirts. Um, and for that, the RTP is great, um, but it, it really comes down to uh, your business model, uh, your space constraints and uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you print a, very, a wide, wide variety of different shirts in 8,000 colors and 500 styles, then you're going to have to pre-treat. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you do your basic shirts, uh, <clears throat> your standard, you know, black, whites, reds, navies, all that, then the RTP is a great way to go. And it saves a lot of time because you don't have to pre-treat. And mm -hmm. I actually had somebody from a really big shop. Um, they were making the comment that they used, a, they had to pay special attention and use a, higher end brand to get the same quality of print that mm -hmm. they can with our RTP shirts. Yeah. Um, but that's, that comes down to, if you use a higher quality shirt, you can typically use less pre-treatment and less ink to get the same 
good results where if it's a really rough shirt, like the knuckles of my, my, mm -hmm. you know, so you have all these Humpty dumps in your threads, you have to fill that with pre-treatment and ink, and that's yeah. going to require more of each, which is going to raise the cost per shirt. So when you sort of factor everything out, it's, it can be roughly about the same or less, especially right. when you take into account time savings. Right, right. Thanks so much for answering that. That was a very detailed answer. Um, funny Sorry. question. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's good stuff. I mean, keep in mind the people are, who are asking these questions, um, you know, they're new, they're new. So they want to, they want to get that. They want to get that knowledge. Um, another question is who sells RTP pre-treated shirts? This It's this guy who you're looking at right here. He's the one who sells it. If you go to their website, uh, RT, uh, I believe it's RTP, RTP apparel. Yep. Yep, rtpapparel.com, you'll be able to check out their pre-treated shirts. Um, so I do have the video up. So let me play the video because I know once once we play the video here for their pre-treatment machines, we'll have more questions. More questions. Yep. And then we can jump into those, okay? Um, and you're very welcome, Carlton. Okay, let me go ahead and share, optimize. Here we go. So there you have it. We, those are our, or those are there, <laughs> three types of uh, pretreatment machines um, we are now um, carrying. So we have the new exciting Viper Mini, the Viper, as well as the Viper Max. Uh, and you guys saw based on your uh, type of business uh, and size, you know, they have a pretreatment machine that is for you. Um, so here is let's go back here and get some questions uh it, is there a shelf life for pre-treated shirt now before you answer that um brian i'm going to also introduce marika modi here you know her very well our guests uh, should also know her very well hey marika um i'm gonna do a little uh, passover to her <laughs> i just realized that i'm wanted for another meeting yay so <laughs> So Marika is our product relations uh, manager, and uh, she will go ahead and ask Brian the questions. Um, shortly after the questions, we'll jump into our breakout sessions. Okay, guys, it was a pleasure for uh, once again, having everybody here uh, join me in our presentation today, but you guys are all in amazing hands with our product relations manager, Marika Modi, as well as uh, Brian Walker, the owner 
um, of uh, Viper pretreat machines. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. Marika, over to you. You're on mute. <laughs> Let me ask you to unmute. Uh -huh. There you go. There we go. Hey, Brian, I think we asked, answered a lot of the questions so far in here. Um, there was one I saw a little higher up. And they asked um, how much, oh, the, that was a pricing question. So we'll defer that one to the breakout room, actually. Um, so I think a lot of people are really concerned about, you know, whether pre-treating garments are better than purchasing blanks and pre-treating your, yourself. So that's something you could really answer a little better for us because you've been in the game for so long and you've done both. Yeah. Um, even though we manufacture all the pre-treatments and the machines, nobody likes to pre-treat. I, I don't even like to pre-treat. It's so much easier just to pull the shirt off the shelf and, and go at it and print. Um, but there's always going to be a case and a time that within the foreseeable future that you're going to have to pre-treat. Uh, so it's something you need to learn how to do, understand it, um, because it's, it's the foundation of your DTG business, really. 80% uh, of all the problems that people face result from improper pre-treating. Period. That's pretty much what we've seen in just our dealings with everything, either too little or not cured enough or just whatever. Um, and that's sort of the, the big thing. So if you can get the pre-treating down and manage it and be able to handle it, uh, then you'll be able to build a successful business as long as you, you know, you have a good plan to work from. But um yeah, it, it all depends. Like I said, some customers may require or request a certain brand of shirt. So you're going to have to, you know, cater to the customer needs. Uh, it just depends on the business that you're building. And is it better one way or the other? N no, I think a lot of it really comes down to the quality of the shirts that you're use, utilizing and using. And then from there, getting the results that you need and your customers find acceptable. Um, it's funny, we've dealt with a lot of big companies and small companies. Some, some big companies really strive for quality. Others do the minimum amount that they need to, to use, I call it the minimal, minimum acceptable product. Um, and they, they aren't out to put out quality products. Uh, when I had my shop, that's what I mainly focused on was quality, delivering it service-wise and giving, giving the best product available. When you do that, you can build a really successful business. Um, and, you know, so the quality-wise of the shirts, uh, the RTP quality, uh, we've really been able to improve it over the past four years, five years that we've, wow, six years since we started officially. And... Um, so I would put us in on the par of up with some of the upper tier shirt uh, companies that are out there. We're not a Gildan. I can tell people that. Uh, can you get decent results with Gildan? Yeah, if you know what you're doing, but typically it's gonna require more pre-treatment ink to get a, a good comparable result. I always tell people uh, higher thread count, the smoother the surface of the shirt, the better your print's going to be, period. So hopefully that answers a little bit of it. Uh, here's one. Is there a ventilation requirement for indoor pretreatment? Uh, I would not put myself in a vacuumed, uh, completely sealed room. You obviously want to have the, the big, actually the biggest issue probably you'll have. Um, and we even saw this one. We had our shop with a uh, conveyor dryer is uh, the burn off of the dyes within the shirts themselves, uh, especially lower quality shirts. Uh, you'll get a lot of burn off with that. Um, you know, obviously there, you know, our pre-treatments, uh, we just got our Okio Tech certification again for uh, the Eco Passport certification for 2021. Uh, our stuff is CPSIA um, certified. That's the California products or consumer product safety, something, something act or whatever. Uh, so it won't 
you know, make you grow three heads and, you know, do weird things like that. But you don't want to have a really confined, confined room, even when you're, you're just heat pressing a standard shirt without pretreatment on it. Like I said, because of the burn offs and stuff. Uh, so you want to have at least some good ventilation. Um, but outside of that, um, it's, it really isn't uh, a super huge issue. Again, now, if, like most places they can have, like, I don't know, where it looked like the picture that you sent me earlier, it was nice and warm and I uh, could have the windows open. I'm not doing that here because it's uh, this weekend, I think it's going to be like a high of seven. Oh, so, man. but uh, yeah, having some type of ventilation or at least airflow is, is definitely preferable because uh, if you get a lot of dye burn off, you can get that haze. If you've ever been in certain print shops, <laughs> You can actually, it looks like uh, uh, what uh, Southern California on a good smoggy day. You get that nice haze hanging there. Um, so yeah, it, it, ventilation, it should be just standard practice in general. So here's one about the Viper Max. It asks <clears throat> about the overspray from the Viper Max. Now mm -hmm. I know we've been using the Viper Max now for probably about six to eight months or so. I think we got in the beginning of COVID. So almost a year we've had that Viper Max. And I mean, I would say the, the overspray is very minimal. I know we clean it about once a week, but. Yeah, the only thing where you really see it's on the sides of the unit, it's not gonna spray all over the room type of a thing. Um, and that's partially, we designed it so, um, Let's, let me rephrase that. I've seen some systems that have a lot of pressure and even, you know, people say, well, you can't do it in an open air unit. And actually, yes, you can. Um, it's due to the fluid dynamics and the way we designed it. You'll get a little bit uh, off to the sides that can be wiped down on the machine, but it's also, it's sort of encased on the sides. Um, yeah, and if you're doing heavy, heavy, heavy use, you're going to have to wipe down those sides a little bit more, but it's nothing like mine at my shop. For most standard users, it's not going to be a big deal. I just no, you a can... bunch of t-shirts around it. Yeah. Um, so here's one about the Viper Mini. How wide does the Viper Mini spray and where are the maintenance requirements? Um, maintenance requirements, that would be like any pre-treat machine. Typically what we say is at the end of every day, you should um, flush it out. Uh, typically use a, a very warm or hot water. Uh, once a week, we recommend flushing it with like a cleaning solution just to keep everything open and clean. Because if you think about it, pre-treatment itself helps bind the inks to the shirts. So I'm not going to say it's a glue, but it is sort of a binder type setup. And, um, you know, if you don't clean it out, you're going to have issues. But uh, that's actually really easy with all of our machines. You can just take the tube out of the pretreatment, flush that through. You can actually collect that pretreatment and then just flush hot water through it. Uh, 30, well, be realistic, 60 to 90 seconds and you can be done doing that. Um, the width on the Viper Mini, that was the first part of the question, right? Yes. Um, you can easily do up to 16 inches plus, which is going to be wider than most any of the printers are going to print. And you can do it however right. long you want, too. And then, um, so the largest size shirts, hoodies that fit on the Viper Max. So I guess we're going both ways, width and thickness. Oh, uh, with the Max, the, the great thing with that is, is you can actually adjust, if you watch one of our other videos we have on YouTube, uh, it's completely programmable. So the way that it works is it sprays, moves down and sprays, and you can actually adjust that overlap. So if you have a really, really thick item, you could actually adjust that down, or you could uh, actually, the legs in that can be shortened also, which is not a big deal. Um, and the, um, for how thick or how big, we actually have an oversized platen. I want to say it's a 20 by 24 platen, again, which is bigger than most uh, direct to garment printers. Because I think the max platen on the Rico is what, 16, 16 20? by 20, I think. Yeah. So you can definitely spray larger than 
most of the direct garment printers on the market. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, six, yeah 16 by 19.6. <laughs> Shy of 20, and then, 20 plus So miles. I know, so when I use the Viber Mags, I usually stack about a dozen shirts and I would say that's pretty equivalent to like one to two hoodies stacked. Uh, you get all radical. You go a whole dozen well, I'm shirts. all about efficiency, Brian. I like to just knock things out. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, if there are no more questions, I will open up these breakout rooms. You guys can talk to our sales reps, get some more information about this uh, printer bundle in a box. Um, we'll give you some pricing information and all that good stuff. Uh, so I want to take some time. Thank you, Brian, for joining us today, despite all that's going on in your neck of the woods. Um, I will see you next Tuesday again for my webinar. Yep. And um, yeah, so I'll open up the breakout rooms, guys. Uh, please join them. Oh, Brian, your contact info, if anybody wants to contact you. Uh, they can contact us. Um, we actually just redesigned everything for our uh, corporate website, igrouptech, letter I, G-R-O-U-P-T-E-C-H.com. Uh, and from there, everybody can access all three of our websites for the pre-treatments, the machines, and RTP. Um, and from each of those, um, basically, info at igrouptech.com. Um, we're trying to rebrand everything with, um, we're one of the, actually, I think probably the only company in the industry that produces pre-treat machines, manufactures pre-treatments, and now manufactures ready to print shirts. Um, so any of the emails from any of those companies basically all funnel into our general email. So, um, or they can call us 877-673-4378. I should have written that and just held it up to the camera. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't get it all. So, um, all right, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Brian. I'm going to open up these thank breakout you. rooms so you guys can talk to your sales reps. All right.